Peter, welcome. We know you so well. We hear you often in the scripture. It's good to have you with us today. I'm here to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am a servant and a follower, but I think I know why I'm here, and I'm not pleased. No, I thought you would be happy to be among us with your good news. Well, yes, certainly, but I suspect you want to focus <laughs> on a time when I did not make a choice to be a proud witness. A time in which I failed. See, that's what's puzzling to us and why we want to look at that event at the time that you denied Jesus. It seems hard to understand. You were a leader of the disciples and the one who seemed to understand Jesus and what he was doing as the Messiah. I thought I understood. Jesus even complimented me on my bold witness to me who he who he was as Messiah. I, I, I witnessed to that. And he called me blessed, filled with God's word. But then, even after you were warned, you denied him three times. Yeah. If I could go back and face that crossroad again, I would know what to do. You see, I thought I knew what Jesus was doing in, in spite of the, the times that he told us he was going to suffer and die, I thought he would be what we hoped he would be. After all, he paraded in Jerusalem like, like, like the coming Messiah, the, the king. And I thought we were on our way to have God's Messiah as the king and ruler we needed. I didn't know what all this talk about suffering was about. And that's why you could not speak his name when you were in the courtyard? At that point, everything was wrong. He wasn't supposed to get arrested. I even tried to fight for him. He wasn't supposed to be put on trial. Where was his power? Where was his miracles? Where was his ability to simply walk away when they threatened him? At that point, when they accused me, I saw Jesus failing, and I failed. Were you afraid? Afraid? Yeah, I guess so, but I was baffled. I was confused. I was disappointed. I, I was in despair. That's not an excuse. It's just what happened. You said you would even die with him. Didn't you mean it? That was my quick mouth again. Another time I spoke without thinking. I just said it to impress Jesus and the others. I, I was looking for another compliment. It was important for me to know that Jesus respected me. I thought I was, I was worthwhile, that I, I needed him to appreciate me and what I've done for him. But his warning, didn't you even hear his warning? Jesus said many things I didn't really understand at the time. I guess I just wasn't hearing. It was easy for me, I, I'm sure for you too, to see myself as strong in the faith, able to speak the right words, able to be the one to stand up for Jesus and to witness for him. But when I was in that situation, I could not choose the path I knew I should choose. I could not say the words that I knew I needed to say. It was dark in my spirit at that moment, and I could not see and I could not speak. And so, a terrible time? More terrible than you could know. Oh, I know that all of us find ourselves in places where we know we should speak the good word. I know what it's like for you. You find yourselves among those who dirty their mind with 
and mouths with words that hurt or, or shame. I know you find yourself among those who misuse God's name, act as though his commands don't really exist. I know you struggle in your minds with what to say and do in those situations. The questions will come, will my words of faith help? Will they be effective? Won't what I say set me apart and make me look foolish? Ruin my relationships? <laughs> Isn't it better just to keep quiet or, or just go along? Oh, I know. You may not fight, face a time when your words would put your life in jeopardy. But certainly there are times when we all find ourselves at a crossroad that will call on us to boldly speak in Jesus' name and God's will. And at that moment, we fail. You know us too well. We don't always say the words we should when we should. But you know, the best part of my story is that I didn't finish my discipleship in tears of failure. Jesus came and found me on that beach. And after he had risen, he loved me enough to call me back after I had turned my back on him. Do you love me? He asked me three times. And he sent me to feed his lambs and his sheep. And here's the best part. He calls you back too. He does not leave us in our failure. He does not turn away. He is there each day with the forgiveness that we need to go on one more day. To face one more test. And by his power, the power of the Holy Spirit to be what he wants us to be, to be what we need to be. Paul said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. That's our affirmation, our calling. We are to stand and speak the good news because he has done all for us. Certainly. Most certainly so. Remember that you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Seek his power to walk in the light. <clears throat> thank you, Peter. Thank you for your courage. And thank you for your faith. Thank you for being here today.